Hello, and welcome back to another in-depth weather video. Today, we're going to be straying a little bit away from the tropics, but we're still going to be covering them. We're also going to be looking in at some excessive rainfall, and then we'll finish up with the models. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss another in-depth weather video. So, here is the current watches, warnings, and advisories. We have some heat alerts in both the northwest and the northeast actually let's see here we have okay so these are heat advisories yeah so they're both heat advisories no excessive heat warnings currently issued we also have some flood flash flood watches as well as other flash flood warnings flood advisories stretching from areas of New Mexico to Nebraska as well as a few in very southern Texas associated with Hannah. We also have a few red flag warnings in areas of California, Oregon, Idaho, and Nevada. So let's move on to the radar. Oh, there we go. So we do have this long band of rain starting with the monsoonal moisture and then working its way up through Kansas, Nebraska, that's where the bulk of the rain is, and then a few more bands of rain and some, some more showers through the Great Lakes region. We also have a few showers and thunderstorms still associated with Hannah working through South Texas, as well as some thunderstorms in some areas of the South, such as Louisiana, Alabama, Florida, all associated with the tropics. We also have a few showers and thunderstorms in the west, very isolated though, just one cluster right in here. Now let's move on to the National Hurricane Center, where Hannah is now a tropical depression with sustained winds of 30 miles an hour, minimum central pressure of 1,003 millibars, and moving west-southwest at 7 miles an hour. The National Hurricane Center has stopped issuing advisories for this storm. This is all the Weather Prediction Center. But we do have our next cyclone here, our next tropical cyclone. Formation chance in 48 hours is 80%, 5 days in 90%. So shower activity is becoming a little better organized in association with a broad area of low pressure located over the central tropical Atlantic, about midway between the coast of Africa and the Lesser Antilles. Environmental conditions are expected to become increasingly conductive for development of the system, and a tropical depression or tropical storm is likely to form within the next day or two while moving westward to west-northwestward at 15 to 20 miles an hour. So a quick system, quick moving system. This system is expected to begin affecting portions of the Lesser Antilles on Wednesday or Wednesday night, and interest on those islands should continue to monitor its progress so we'll come back to that when we go through the five day alerts All right, I want to check in on the East Pacific a little bit and then we'll check in on the Central Pacific and so right now the East Pacific there's nothing currently going on but then you move over to the Central Pacific and you have the East Pacific named Hurricane Douglas now affecting Hawaii should move through T today or should have moved through last night into today uh, sustained winds right now 85 miles an hour minimum central pressure 989 millibars and moving west northwest at 16 miles an hour so moving a little bit faster now let's go through all let's go through the five day outlooks so let's start here in the Atlantic so this storm here will possibly so right now is staying a little bit more of a northerly track than Gonzalo did so possibly gonna I've seen from the GFS it riding the coast of these islands and possibly turning northward so and we saw that a little bit yesterday on the GFS so now if we move to the East Pacific, 
Sorry, my computer's being a little slow today. So the East Pacific is calming down a little bit. And then we have the Central Pacific, which doesn't have any disturbances except for Douglas. So the Pacific is calming down. The Atlantic is still starting to ramp up here. So let's move on to the excessive rainfall outlook. So in association with that band, we have marginal and slight risks from Arizona and Utah to Maine. Slight risks in areas of Colorado, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas, and New Mexico. And then another area of slight, slight chance in Texas and Louisiana. Marginal risks are everywhere in this dark green. Areas associated with Hanna and other tropical moisture as well as that band of moisture moving through the country. Now let's move into the NAM 3 kilometer model where we will be tracking this line of storms and then we will move into the GFS and track the tropics. So here's the NAM 3 kilometer model. We're going to be tracking this line of storms right in here. So this is going to be moving across some showers and thunderstorms popping up in Missouri and then it just continues to push eastward mostly as a heavy rain threat but possibly some thunderstorms in there and those isolated thunderstorms will continue to be moving through until they move through into the off the east coast most likely by Tuesday. Then you have the next system popping up here on Wednesday. Our temperatures for today, general consensus here, we're going to be looking at like these forecast hours here. Alrighty. So we have starting from the west, we have some 80s and 90s in the northwest. But depending on elevation, you could see 60s and 70s. In the southwest, you have the desert, which is still in the triple digits, but everywhere else is mostly in the 80s and 90s, except for a few spots. In the north central part of the country, mostly 70s and 80s, and relatively, that is about the same, a few speckles of the 60s in there. Now, across the south and central parts of the country, you will see some difference in temperatures due to cloud cover, but generally 70s through 90s, some areas even getting close to the triple digits in Texas. Now, for the Great Lakes and the Northeast, you have the areas behind the front and the areas ahead of the front. Behind the front, you're going to be getting 70s, 80s. Ahead of the front, you're going to be seeing where those heat advisories are hotter temperatures, 80s, 90s, even some areas here in Virginia that could possibly see closer to that 95 mark. But the mountains and Maine as well are all relatively in the 70s and 80s. Now let's move on to the GFS and let's look into the tropics and track that next system. Let's go to the North Atlantic. And we're tracking this system, this broad area of low pressure. So as we move through here, this is showing that it's going to develop into a tropical storm. As you can see, it's showing that it's gonna ride these islands just straight up the coast, possible hurricane there, maybe. But then it starts to get close to Florida, kind of weakens a bit, and then turns to the north, and then dissipates. That's what I've been seeing in the past few model runs. Yesterday we saw it strengthen over here, which there hasn't been a tropical system in this area since Bertha. So there's definitely some sort of energy there. The matter is, will the thunderstorms or anything off the coast here with that system on Tuesday affect the sea temperatures? Most likely, I don't think they will, but we'll just have to wait and see with that. That is, 
it starts to move into the North Carolina area on the 4th of August. But the and the islands in the Caribbean, the Lesser Antilles, Wednesday into Thursday, definitely looking like the time frame to possibly get some impacts from this storm as it continues its way up. The Bahamas could be affected. That would be Saturday. So that is something that we're definitely going to have to watch. Most likely, I will be doing a video on this in the next two days or so. So I will provide more detail in that video. But as always, thank you very much for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. I hope you all have a great Monday.